All right, I want to start out by giving all praise to the Most High. Um, in the name of His only begotten Son, some of you may know the Most High as uh, the Lord. Some of you might know Him as Father. Some of them might, um, you might know Him as Yahweh, Yahuwah, um, Yahweh. Um, you might know the only begotten Son as uh, Jesus, Yeshua, Yesha, Yahweh Shai, Yahusha, Yahushua. You know, whatever your conscience lead you to right now to call them. That's what it is. But let's get into this video. You have to um, to understand this video. I would advise you to uh, examine what I'm saying and actually go back and read for yourself after I uh, bring out a few scriptures. I'm not gonna take up too much time. It's basically carnal versus carnally minded, right? Because a lot of people think that uh, carnal being carnal uh, and being carnally minded is the same thing. But let's check the scriptures. Um, and after this, you will you will see what I'm, what point I'm trying to make further on through the video. But after this video, whatever the spirit leads you to, um, it leads you to. So I'm gonna start out by Romans eight and six. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Number seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnally mind is not subject to the, the law of God. And if you don't know what the law of God is, um, I'm going I'm to bring out a quick scripture about what the law of God is. You can start in Nehemiah 8 and verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. So if you know the story of Nehemiah, this is when we're gathering back together. So I'm going to skip to verse 8 for time's sake. So they read, remember this is the law of Moses that they're reading out of. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So the law of Moses is also the law of God. So the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. So what is a carnal mind? Um, it's a worldly mind, it's an earthly mind. I can prove it with a precept. Give me one second from the New Testament, of course. All right, so I'm gonna go to 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, I'm going to start at verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Um, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. I'm going to skip down to verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised to, in power. It is sown a natural body. Here we go. It is raised a spiritual body. So a carnal mind would be what? A natural mind right and there is a spiritual body and so it's written the first man adam was made a living soul the last adam was made a quickening spirit how be it that was not first which is spiritual so the first adam wasn't a spiritual body but that which is natural it was a natural body and afterward that which is spiritual so the last adam is a spiritual body but the first man is of the earth. There it is. So if the first Adam was made in a natural body and he was made of the earth, then that means a carnal body is made of the earth. So let's go back to Romans 7. No, a carnal or earthly mind is not subject to the law of God. Keep that in mind. I want to go back to Romans and I'm going to go to chapter 7. So let's see if you're carnal or carnally minded. Romans 7. I'm going to start at verse 
14. For we know that the law, which is the law of God, is spiritual. Now remember, spiritual is not of a fleshly body. You know, it's not of a fleshly mind. Spiritual is a glorified body, but we'll get there. We'll get there. But I am carnal. So the author of this or the person who this is inspired by was Paul, an apostle. Right. So he himself just said, I am carnal. Right. Sold under sin. So his body is carnal. But watch this. Verse. I'm going to skip to verse. 22. For I delight, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. What is the inward man? It's your spirit. You know, besides your brain. And, no, what's inside of your brain? A spirit. What's inside of your body? A spirit. So he delight. So his spirit delights in the law of God, but his carnal flesh, his carnal mind, not his carnal flesh, his carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. It wants to do everything contrary to it. But I see, verse 23, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. So there's another law in his member warring against the law of his mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. So the carnal body or carnal mind is bringing into the law, uh, law of captivity or the law of sin. It's bringing your thoughts to the law of sin. But watch this, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because we know that sin equals death. The more you sin, you're going to die, right? If you if you know the law a little bit, then you know there's a lot of stuff that leads to being put to death, right? So where are we going with this, right? Some people would say uh, you might know him as Christ or Hamashiach. Uh, didn't he take away the law well in the spirit let me let me just get precepts regulation all right so i'm gonna start at verse 17 i'm gonna start at verse 16 this i say then walk in the spirit walk in the spirit which is subject to the law of god and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is your natural body, your natural carnal mind. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So your spirit, you know, let, let's read that one time. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. It's going everything against the spirit wants you to do. And the spirit against the flesh. So the spirit is like pushing back. It's saying, no. I have to I have to keep I have to obey, right? And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law because you're already subject to it. You can't be under what you're subject to. There's nothing against that. Watch this. Now these are the works of the flesh, the carnally mind, are manifest, which are these. Because the flesh is sown in sin. Remember 1 Corinthians 15. Which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lasciviousness. I'm, I'm sorry if I messed up that word. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, uh, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the wits I tell you before. As I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're doing those things, um, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit, which is what? The inward man, right? Is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. These, all of these fruits, you can't go against them. I want to make a point real quick. When it says uncleanness, where in the Bible do you learn about uncleanness? You can go back to Leviticus 11 through chapter about 18, and you can learn about what being unclean means according to the Bible, 
You know, other 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 people might have their own interpretation, but you have to stick to what's in the book, right? Oh, I'm gonna just leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you have any uh, scriptures that you would like to share, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, that's the message I got: carnally versus carnally minded, spiritual versus spiritually minded. I'm out.